Let's talk a little bit about neuron, which is the mesenchymal stem cell from Brainstorm Cell Therapeutics. This is a publicly traded company in the United States. They have several studies that are ongoing in different stages, the most advanced being their ALS study, and after that, their progressive multiple sclerosis study. If you are a participant in this study, this is how it would work. Bone marrow is harvested because that's where these MSCs live. They might use bone marrow from the pelvic bone. They would numb you up, might give you some light sedation, but they use a device that allows them to aspirate bone marrow and then bone marrow is expanded and cryopreserved. Eventually it's sent to a central processing facility where the cells are then thawed and induced to differentiate and then transported back to the treatment location where the cells are administered directly into the spinal fluid. Results from the couple of the clinical trials with Neuron. First, I wanna talk about the phase two clinical trial, the MSCNTF in the use of MSCNTF or Neuron in progressive multiple sclerosis. This was presented at the 37th Congress of the European Committee for Treatment in Multiple Sclerosis, otherwise known as ECTRAMS 2021. This involved the intrathecal administration of MSCNTF cells in patients with primary or secondary progressive multiple sclerosis. There were a number of primary endpoints, or the primary endpoint, I should say, was safety and tolerability, although there were a number of secondary efficacy points, such as a how quickly you can perform a timed 25-foot walk, a nine-hole peg test, and other secondary outcome measures. The bone marrow was aspirated from 20 patients at various local sites with the aspirate sent to the central facility for culture and differentiation. After shipping that product back to the local sites, about 100 to 125 million MSCs were injected into the spinal fluid in the study subjects at week zero, eight, and 16 there are 46 matched controls. Now, two patient participants withdrew from the study because their bone marrow aspirate failed to grow adequately. But of the 18 participants treated, 16 received all treatments, all three treatments, and completed the study, including follow-up at week 28. Two participants withdrew, one due to procedure-related inflammation of the covering over the spinal cord and brain called arachnoiditis. The primary endpoint again was safety, headache, and back pain from the lumbar puncture were the most common side effects reported. There were no deaths and no treatment-related adverse events due to worsening of multiple sclerosis. Improvements were identified in favor of the treatment group for all outcome measures, the time 25-foot walk, the nine-hole peg test, the MS walking scale, the low contrast letter acuity test, and the simple digits modalities test. And there was an increase in biomarkers, things that could be measured in the spinal fluid, biomarkers of neuroprotection and reduction in biomarkers of neuroinflammation. How about the ALS study? This is the most advanced in terms of phases of all the studies. In fact, the phase three trial was completed and Neuron or Brainstorm Cell Therapeutics went on to do an extension trial for subjects with ALS, meaning not a phase four, but they were allowed to continue to treat the subjects who had already been treated in the phase three trial. This was a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial was announced in November 2020. I'm going to kind of cut to the chase here on this study because it was very striking. Going back to the phase two trial, 
the treatment group, those who actually received neurone, had about a 35% slowing in the expected rate of decline of this disease as measured by something called the ALS Functional Rating Scale Score Revised. There was a placebo group in the phase two trial and they had slowing as well. So there's a placebo effect and this is very common, but their slowing was only about 15% compared to 35 I think 35.5% in the treatment group with ALS. And this difference between 15 and 35 was considered to be both statistically and clinically significant. And this was the basis for going on to the phase three trial. When subjects were enrolled in the phase three trial, it's important to know that the investigators enrolled subjects who are more severely affected at the time of treatment. Their ALS was worse. Now that's very important because when the phase three trial was completed, the investigators and the statisticians still found that the expected rate of decline in subjects treated with neuron who actually had ALS was still a slowing of about 35.5%. This matched nearly exactly the phase two trial. And there were biomarkers that were being used to make sure that in terms of the spinal fluid, in terms of the cellular activity in the brain, that the treatment was doing what it was expected to do, which was, you know, stimulate nerve growth factors, reduce inflammation, slow programmed cell death. In the phase three trial, there was a very big jump in the response of the placebo group up to about 29%. And because the difference between 29 and 35%, which is much smaller, it was not possible on a statistical basis to say that the treatment group benefited more than the placebo group. That's very disappointing, of course, but there's a however. And the however is when the researchers went back and reanalyzed the data and matched those who were treated to be more like the phase two trial. In other words, if they only looked at people who were in a earlier stage or more mildly affected ALS and compared that to placebo, they found the exact same 35 and 15% difference. Meaning it's very clear that neuron is actually quite effective, but like many other conditions, the most effective intervention is when the problem is caught and treated early. With that information in hand, not only was Brainstorm Cell Therapeutics allowed to continue with an extension trial, but ultimately they did decide to submit for what's called a biologics license based on that smaller subset of the phase three trial, hoping that the FDA would approve the treatment in more mildly affected ALS patients. Disappointingly, the FDA very recently declined that biologics license. However, at this stage or at the very moment that this video is being recorded, that is being appealed. There's more evidence that neuron actually works because in South Korea, there is a stem cell product that is very similar to neuron that has been FDA approved by the South Korean equivalent of the US FDA. Unfortunately, that treatment is not available outside of South Korea. It was a phase two trial, not a phase three trial that led to its approval in South Korea. And we are starting to see a little bit of that in the United States where conditions that have a great need like ALS are getting treatments approved even though they haven't completed all the phases of the clinical trial. We recently saw that with the Amelix Pharmaceuticals product Relivrio for ALS. At any rate, the rate of decline, the slowing in the rate of decline of the ALS functional rating scale score of Lenzumestracel, which is the name of the product in South Korea, is very similar to neuro. We've touched on multiple sclerosis. We've touched on ALS. However, there are other conditions you may be interested in. There is a pipeline for Alzheimer's disease in earlier phases, and there are pipelines for Parkinson's disease as well. So ALS, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, and Alzheimer's disease, all in various stages of investigation for the use of 
autologous mesenchymal stem cells in the treatment of these diseases.